the Lemonade Car Show is sponsored by OMVIC, Ontario's vehicle sales regulator. Welcome to the Lemonade Car Show, brought to you by OMVIC Crown, Hotspot Auto Parts, and Sound Insurance. I'm your host, Lorraine Sommerfeld. I'm joined today by John Raymond. He's with the APA, and Chris Muir is our mechanic for the show. We often say, well, we always say, brought to you by OMVIC, and sometimes people might go, what the heck is OMVIC? It is the Ontario Motor Vehicle Industry Council, and it is the regulator for all, all car sales in Ontario. Uh, Alberta has AMVIC, which is similar, and other provinces just have layers of law. Like BC but, has the VSA. Yeah. yeah. But AMVIC here in Ontario um, is a very important part of our uh, sales. Absolutely. And, and chasing people down and putting them in jail, the bad guys. And it's to serve the public. There's a public helpline. If you have a question, you could go not only online, but you could uh, call them up. They'll answer you in over a hundred different languages. They have a device that allows that to happen. And they're really there to help the consumer. And you know, every day they're getting calls in, I signed last night, but I'm not so sure I want the car, or I didn't get what I expected, it wasn't written on the contract. A number of questions, and they, they do a very good com uh, job communicating to the public online and commercials they're going to be at the toronto or they were at the toronto auto show mm -hmm. and um you'll see everywhere you go um a salesman th behind them is a certificate they have to go to onvic school mm -hmm. well, it's not called that but that's what i call it so they're certified and that means they have to abide by the standards and rules that have been set by that and when you buy a car on that long piece of yellow paper there's one line that says onvic ten dollars still ten dollars yes mm -hmm. ten dollars that's their funding no government funding they fund themselves. They, in fact, uh, pay money to the government after they've settled fines with people who have done bad things. So it's really important. And you mentioned their um, online stuff. And their website is fun. If you're about to buy a vehicle from somewhere, you can go on a check and see if they've been busted before, mm -hmm. individual salespeople or actual establishments and dealers. And it's kind of like snooping through somebody else's mail because you can go in there and read it. And I find that. Fun. And they have the motor deal, uh, motor vehicle dealers compensation fund. So if a dealership does go uh, bankrupt or there's a question of a lien or extended warranty, um, you could go to the compensation through the compensation board yeah. to get some level of restitution for that. It's the other thing I like about it is if you have a question or a complaint or a concern, you can call and talk to a real person. And you don't need to know fancy words. You don't need to know jargon. You don't need to even understand exactly what's happened. You just know that it's not right. And they're very down to earth and calm, and they'll talk to you. And that, we get used to a lot of legalese and bureaucratic BS, frankly, that you can't always get past. And they work, <laughs> they work with consumer organizations, such as the APA, every day on uh, issues that are uh, of interest to consumers and protecting their rights. So, they include the general public, they include advocacy groups like the APA, and industry experts as well. And it, nobody, if you sell cars, nobody wants a black mark against them from OMVIC. You no. don't want open yeah. investigations, which means dealerships are more likely to, of course, stay above the law and do the right thing. Mm -hmm. The other thing is address issues very quickly to make sure that it doesn't go past and into and not to steal the thunder of what's coming up in this show, but you know, education is a very important part in communications of their effort to make sure as a group, the selling dealers in Ontario improve their level of compliance and standards. And I think it also helped level the playing field because we think um, there's some places in Ontario very remote, like very far removed, and people don't always have a choice of where they're gonna buy a car from or have it serviced. Um, but, brings everybody up to the same playing field, so you, you are entitled to and what you will receive just as good a service there as you might where there's more competition. Well, and they have dollar. compliance officers throughout the whole province, so you know, it's not only in Toronto. Well, I, I'll get emails from OMVIC going, this is who we busted this week and this is for how much. And well, it's on their website, actually. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, like I said, it's kind of snoopy and fun. Like, like you said, if you want to know if a dealer has been in trouble, it's on their website. So sometimes when you're doing your shopping, that's a good place to start. That's a good place to start. We're devoting this whole show to OMVIC to help teach consumers what they need to know before they purchase cars. We'll be back after this break. The Lemonade Car Show is sponsored by OMVIC, Ontario's vehicle sales regulator.
Little Lemonade Car Show is sponsored by OMVIC, Ontario's vehicle sales regulator. I'm Giorgini, and welcome to the special edition of the Lemonade Car Show. I'm here at the headquarters of OMVIC, the Ontario Motor Vehicle Industry Council. We're here today with John Carmichael, who is the CEO of OMVIC. And uh, for other people who don't know what that is, Ontario Motor Vehicle Industry Council, George, and it's great to be with you. I'm glad to be here too. So, uh, OMVIC is the um, organization that has oversight over auto dealing in Ontario. Right. We are the regulator for the car business. We're all 8,100 car dealerships across the province, some 31,000 registered salespeople. And our job is to ensure that uh, vehicles are sold legally in this province. So uh, I should also point out for viewers in other provinces, certainly British Columbia, Alberta, um, have similar uh, oversight do. bodies that are, uh, it's a mix of enforcement and also professionals that dealers sit on the board. Yes, we have, uh, we have a 12 member board, which is a combination of a number of elected new and used car dealers from across the province and uh, also some government or ministerial appointees who are functionally consumer representatives. So we have, we have two key pillars as part of our mandate. One is consumer protection, which is obviously the genesis of OMVIC and why we are in the business we're in. And the other is to enhance dealer professionalism, to help build the, the, the uh, standards by which auto dealers across this province operate. So is OMVIC uh, like part of the Ontario government? No, we're, we're a, actually we're a private not-for-profit organization and uh, we operate under the mandate of the Ministry of Government and Consumer Services and uh, but we are given our authority under the Motor Vehicle Dealer Act and we also have intervention under the Consumer Protection Act in this province. So that would be a bit like uh, a medical professional, maybe engineers, it's like a professional body that sort of maintains standards but also has to do education and enforcement to some degree? Absolutely. We, uh, are, again, our, our primary uh, objective is to ensure that we prevent consumer harm across the province. So we work with uh, consumers as a consumer protection agency, and we talk to consumers, some 3,500 or so every month, who uh, may have a, an inquiry or a complaint or an issue, or just be looking for answers of sorts. Uh, additionally, we work with uh, dealer registrants, salespeople registrants ac across the province, provide them with training, with education, tools to help them do a better job in meeting consumer expectation. Uh, what are some of the recent, uh, you could say, successes or, or accomplishments that on the CAD? Well, the big, I think the big issue for us, and it has been since 2010, we're now 20 years old, actually. Since 2010, when the legislation was renewed, uh, all-in price advertising has been the standard bearer of uh, our primary objective, creating ads that consumers can read and know that if, if I've got an ad with all of these options on a vehicle, lease or buy, new or used, uh, that the only extras in those, beyond those ads will be uh, license and HST. And uh, so the big success for us has been growing uh, consumer awareness of their rights uh, when it comes to advertising and what they expect from a dealer. So what percentage of the public actually knows that all in is the rule if they're buying a car? Well, that's a great question because that's, that's where we live. And uh, today, uh, we started a number of years ago uh, at, at fairly low levels of recognition. Today, we're, we're uh, crowding 50% awareness where consumers are, are fully aware of, of their rights and what uh, the obligations of the dealer are in providing the, the appropriate advertising. So there's no surprises, no hidden secrets, no nothing that's going to throw them offside. And OMVIC was something of a leader in Canada on that because I think that that was copied in other provinces as well. I know the, uh, Alberta, I think also Manitoba, um, certainly Quebec and BC yes, uh, also and have, have all-in advertising in one form or another in a car ad. They're all moving to it in some form. Everybody's got a little bit of a variation to the theme, but uh, Ontario, I, I would say proudly, has been a leader in this area in trying to ensure that consumers uh, can be fully educated and, and know what to expect 
and, uh, and, and see as transparent a process as possible. Are there any things that keep you awake at night or things that you think, you know, I really would like this to be fixed in terms of dealer or consumer regulations? Um, no, I sleep pretty well, George. <laughs> I, I'm very comfortable with the team we have here and, and the work that OMVIC does in, uh, in ensuring that we deliver on the expectation of both the government under the Act, uh, both for our registrant dealers and salespeople and for consumers. Uh, we, we still have issues that are requiring us to be vigilant every day. Things like if you're going to buy or lease a new car, uh, make sure that the disclosures are appropriate, particularly in used vehicles. If, let's say a vehicle has been driven as a, a daily rental vehicle, our job is to ensure that uh, the dealers understand that they have to disclose those issues at time of sale or if there's been damage on a vehicle. What's the mileage, the distance traveled? Is it accurately reflected on a vehicle? Those types of things and changes in technology cause us a little bit of a uh, little bit of heartache from time to time. But for the most part, I think we're doing a, a pretty good job at uh, delivering on expectations. Well, thank you. That was very interesting. Good. Thank you. It's time for a short break. And when we come back, we're going to continue our conversation with John Carmichael. Lemonade Car Show is sponsored by OMVIC, Ontario's vehicle sales regulator. The Lemonade Car Show is sponsored by OMVIC, Ontario's vehicle sales regulator. Welcome back to this special edition of the Lemonade Car Show. We're here with John Carmichael, the CEO of OMVIC, the Ontario Motor Vehicle Industry Council. And uh, John, when I was in the, your waiting area today, I was astonished to come up with this uh, training manual, which is really a manifesto for car buyers. I would say it's a pretty good piece of information. If you're in Ontario, you don't want to go shopping for a used car without this. It's really very helpful. And those are available from, uh, from OnVic at any time to any consumer. Um, so this brings me to your uh, consumer awareness issues. Uh, what are some of the initiatives that OnVic takes to try and get the word out? Well, let, let's start with the big one. Uh, we, we talk about all-in price advertising as being the standard bearer of the legislation that was introduced in 2010. And it's still an issue where we're seeing greater compliance amongst dealers across the province, both new and used car dealers. And, uh, but it's still an important part of what we have to work on every day to ensure that we're driving the message into the marketplace. We want consumers to know that when they go to purchase or lease or, or a new or used vehicle, that the advertising that they're looking at is going to be fully complete. The only additions to advertising they're going to see either in a newspaper ad, online, uh, here on radio or on TV is going to be about, uh, is going to be HST and license. Everything else is going to be included when prices are advertised. And so our job is to ensure that there's compliance across the dealer network, and we're seeing greater and greater uh, reception to that every day. I was also surprised, I mean, to see that there's actually good personal finance information in here. Well, you know, there's so many issues, George, that, uh, that confront consumers. Uh, we've talked about negative equity before. Uh, consumers need to be fully informed, fully educated when they go to purchase. It's a complex purchase. Let's face it, you buy a new used car today, it's not an easy process. And there's so much to choose from and so much detail in financing or however you're, you're going to be buying that vehicle. So we have, uh, we've introduced a couple of new initiatives. One of the big ones that is available to every consumer online through our OMVIC website is the OMVIC Academy. It's a series of videos that helps to educate consumers as to how to buy or lease a vehicle in this market. Uh, they're fun, they're informative, they're transparent, and, uh, and they, they're a bit of a flashback in, uh, to television history. But it's a great tool for a consumer to understand, what am I facing when I go into the market to buy or lease that car? And so we think we've come up with a solution that will give, uh, through five or six videos, will give the consumer the tools they need to go and buy the vehicle. Uh, the other thing that we're doing, which uh, we're very excited about, is we're spending a lot of advertising dollars educating consumers on their rights. 
and our Take a Picture campaign, which has been running for several months now, uh, is geared towards helping consumers to take a picture of the ad, take it into their dealer, reduces disputes, helps the consumer to say to the dealer, this is what I want to buy in a car. The dealer has no doubt that's what they're looking for. And it helps to, uh, if you like, get through much of the, uh, the chatter of the early discussion. What is it you really want to buy? I've got to say also, having visited the website, a lot of the information there would be good, not just for an Ontario resident. It's good uh, right across the country. Yeah. I, I think it's helpful to every consumer. Um, and another thing we're doing, and, and this isn't necessarily visible to consumers, but we're doing a lot of dealer education as well. And we're providing a, uh, a series of videos that dealers and registrants can use in their, in their uh, sales meetings, in their training of their staff, to help understand what consumers are expecting uh, from the other side of the equation. What do you like to see from dealers? What do I like to see? From yeah, like if you're looking at, you know, I, the industry sometimes has a reputation for being a little bit loose with how it works or uh, that maybe it's different from other kinds of retailing. What what would you like in an ideal environment? You you actually were a dealer, I should say. So you I come did to it this for a with, long time. That's right. Um, so I, what, what do you look for? Like in, uh, I, I think the... the the simple key is greater professionalism. Uh, you know, when you look back to the 50s, 60s, 70s, it was, there was, a, it was a different day in many, many ways. The dealer today is much more sophisticated. The registrants who represent our industry are much more sophisticated in how they operate their businesses. And so uh, we're trying to provide tools that will help them to teach their staff to represent them in a way that delivers on that level of professionalism respect, professionalism, transparency, and and we think that uh, we're really getting the job done. We, we really do believe that we're, uh, we're delivering the tools that will help the dealer to do a better job in meeting consumer expectation. It's time for a short break. When we come back, we'll continue the conversation with John Carmichael, and we'll be talking about enforcement. Lemonade Car Show is sponsored by OMVIC, Ontario's vehicle sales regulator. The Lemonade Car Show is sponsored by OMVIC, Ontario's vehicle sales regulator. Welcome back to this special edition of the Lemonade Car Show. And I'm here with John Carmichael, CEO of OMVIC, the Ontario Motor Vehicle Industry Council. John, what happens when things go wrong? What can OMVIC do? Well, that's a great question, George, because it, um, it's always, you know, in, in the consumer protection business, you want to ensure that you've got uh, the strength to follow up and, and protect consumers properly. And so we, we have a, an enforcement arm of OMVIC that gives us the ability to, uh, to investigate, uh, to charge, uh, we have 15 investigators who work for us who are effectively provincial offenses officers. Uh, they have the ability to, to charge those who are doing, uh, who are performing either fraudulent or a wrongful acts in terms of business, such as curbsiders. Uh, curbsiders are illegal car dealers, and uh, those are the individuals who give our industry a bad name. Uh, those are the people who uh, will operate without full disclosure, will often sell vehicles that have been badly damaged and won't tell the consumer, uh, unsuspecting public, uh, and usually will find their way into the private sale world. So and this is like I say, it's my personal vehicle, you know, like, or my mother's vehicle or somebody. Could be anything. I've, I've driven this car to church on Sundays. That's all it's done. But the car could have been a write-off and something somebody has bought from a salvage yard repaired and won't disclose that, or has uh, a lot fewer kilometers showing on the odometer as distance traveled than in fact it really has. So our investigators uh, take those, uh, those situations very, very seriously. And, and in the past year alone, uh, we had 351 investigations. Uh, we charged 18 curbsiders and 12 registrants with, with uh, wrongful activities. And those are criminal charges. Um, one of the things I saw in media reports was that uh, odometer rollbacks 
seem to have come back. I saw a report out of BC and another one in Quebec. Is that a concern for Ombic? Well, you know, you asked me uh, at another time uh, if there's anything that keeps me awake at night. And I mentioned technology. And clearly, technology is an issue uh, because there are people out there today with tools that can come into your dealership or into your, uh, your driveway and change your odometer with technology. And there's a number of different uh, uh, advances in technology that allow these folks to do this type of work. And it uh, basically, it's odometer spinning. And so that's illegal, it's wrong, and we have to find it. And uh, it's becoming more pervasive in the industry as technology becomes more advanced. If a consumer has reason to believe that they've discovered it, let's say a vehicle that's advertised where they see that the mileage maybe in the history varied or, uh, or maybe they actually purchased a vehicle and later found a receipt or some other evidence the mileage was higher. Is that something that you would look at? Oh, uh, that, we, we would want to hear about that through our complaints department in a hurry. We have, uh, we have uh, 3,500 complaints or inquiries come into this place every month through our complaints department alone. And uh, that's where we'd want to hear about it. And then we can escalate that and, and go and have a look and see what whether there's any uh, any substance to that. It's a concern because it, um, it means that if you buy a car with, I don't know, 120,000 kilometers showing on the odometer, and you find out that that car has actually got twice that or three times that in true distance traveled, you got a problem. You, you, you're not getting the vehicle you purchased. And so our job is to go and investigate that, make sure we bring charges against the perpetrators, those who have, who have done the damage. And, uh, and we've had some great success this past year in, uh, in having those charges uh, held up. And, uh, and in fact, we've seen jail time for, for some curbsiders who uh, spinning odometers who are doing illegal activities and who don't belong in our industry. What if a dealer goes out of business that just close up and you have a claim against them? How do you collect? Well, that's another great question. Uh, in a private sale, a consumer really has no recourse other than to civilly pursue uh, the seller of the vehicle. So whether it's on one of the websites or whatever. But when a dealer goes out of business uh, and they have bought their vehicle through that dealer and that dealer is one of our registrants. So this would be an, an Ontario, any dealer in Ontario? It'd be, a, it'd be an Ontario registered dealer. And you look for that blue sticker on the windshield of, or on the door of their dealership. Um, and they have, uh, they are supported or backed by our compensation fund. And this year alone, through some 50 odd claims, 60 claims perhaps, uh, where consumers uh, had things go wrong in the purchase of their vehicles, uh, warranties weren't paid to the supplier. Uh, there, there's damage on the vehicles. There's mechanical. There's uh, or or liens not paid out on trades. They can come to our compensation fund, and we will work to support them. This year alone, we paid out some four hundred and two thousand dollars to consumers in compensation claims to backstop their loss. And that's where I think the consumer protection message of Omvic is really strong. That gives us the, the teeth to say to the, not only the dealer, we want to work with you, but to the consumer, you have a problem, we're here to back you up. Well, John, it's been a pleasure to have a chance to uh, speak to you today. George, I appreciate it. Thank you for visiting Onvik, and uh, it's always a pleasure being with you. You've been watching the Lemonade Car Show. I'm your host, Brian Sommerfeld. I'd like to thank John Raymond and Chris Muir and all the information that Onvix provided this past half hour, as well as being our sponsor, along with Crown, Hotspot Auto Parts, and Sound Insurance. Thanks to you viewers.